Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode eight of the Fork Fix podcast. I am Sherry Bant, and this episode is titled I Could Never Syndrome. So this is something that I used to suffer from. I'm going to admit it, that I could never, that I could nevers. Um, and I want to talk about it a little bit because it seems to come up a lot in my life, actually. And um, yeah, I just want to, I want to bring it up to just open up your mind and have you think a little bit, just to, to have you think. But the first things that I'm going to talk about with this don't really, they're not related to food. Um, where I suffered from the I could never, so I'm going to go way back, lots and lots of years ago before I met my husband, Darren, I used to be a smoker. Yes, I'll admit it. I was a smoker. I was a three pack a day Marlboro Red smoker, serious smoker, not like, you know, and the occasional let's have a beer and have a cigarette smoker. Nope. I was a chimney for the most part. And I, if someone would have said to me back then, you need to quit smoking. I would say I could never do that. I am addicted through and through. So that was one of the first places where this came up in my life. The second place where I'd say I kind of suffered from this a little bit is um, I had my oldest daughter, Haley, and then um, Darren and I had Allison. So two kids, right? If someone would have said to me, you know, you should have a large family, Sherry. Again, I would have said I could never do that. I don't have the patience for that. So when I had, we had number three, which was, you know, now we were a family of five, which is a little odd because you go out to eat and most, you know, most booths or things are for families of four. So we started to grow there, kind of accepted it. And then, um, yeah, then we kind of went on to have child number four and child number five and child number six and child number seven and child number eight. But in the beginning, if someone would to, were to ask me, you know, would you have eight children? I would have said I could never. And I thought that when I saw other families that were large, not that I ever encountered a, uh, encountered a family of our size, to be totally honest. But Darren and I made the decision to just kind of hand it over to God. And we got eight beautiful children and I'm so grateful for it. So again, my oldest daughter, Haley, um, was in, I think, uh, I think it was third grade, third grade, maybe fourth grade. Yeah. Third grade going into fourth grade. She was, she was, she was having some problems with the public school system and we didn't have a lot of money at the time. So we couldn't do private school. So I actually had family members who homeschooled at the time, but I, what did I say? I said, I could never do that. I don't have the patience for that. I am on year number 18 of homeschooling guys. Year number eight freaking teen, right? Then way back when I was younger, because I'm, you know, I would like to think I'm really young now. Still, I feel kind of young, but I'm not. Um, if someone would have said, you need to start a business or multiple businesses, I would have said, I could never do that. That's hard, right? And I'm not saying these things. I'm not saying, um, you know, these things to kind of, I don't know, to brag on myself, even though maybe some of you'd be like, that's not bragging, Sherry. That's just crazy, having eight kids and homeschooling. And, um, yeah, so maybe, and maybe you're right. Maybe it is a little crazy. But, um now let's, let's, let's talk about the health I could never. So we kind of talked about, you know, life I could never, and there's lots more of them that I haven't included, but those are kind of some pictures I want you to think about. Um, and let's talk about the health ones where I used to suffer from this, uh, exercise. I will tell you when I weighed, I think at my biggest guys, I think I was like 245 pounds, which wasn't that long ago. I think that was like 2019, um, before we moved to Michigan, but you know, when I started this journey, I was like 231. But I will tell you, I, I was always a fairly physical person. It's not, I, it just was hard for me to be physical because I was so large and I felt like shit, right? So I would watch other people that were, you know, fit people that went to the gym and did all that kind of healthy, healthy stuff. And I, I can remember thinking to myself, I, we had a treadmill and I would do 10 minutes on it and I just would feel like I was going to die. And I know, I know there's got to be people out there listening to this that feel that or, or, or dealing with that. You know, I couldn't even freaking tie my shoes without getting out of breath. So exercise it's running or walking. I could never, that was my thing. I didn't, that was just, I, in my head, I felt like I couldn't do it. Right. So then the, I losing weight, I knew as time went on that if I was going to like try to get through the diabetes or deal with it or manage it without medication, 
um, I knew I was gonna have to lose weight and I remember thinking I know I got to lose at least 80 pounds for this to make a difference because I'm so freaking fat and um, I didn't understand it all then but I do remember thinking to myself I don't know how I could ever lose 80 pounds like that's another I could never sin syndrome thing and then if someone would have said to me um, Sherry how about going and I'll say vegan because um, before 10 months ago I didn't know what whole food plant-based eating was I would have said I wouldn't have said I could never I would have said you're fucking nuts and I probably shouldn't say that bleep sorry I shouldn't have said that but I would have said that because I couldn't I couldn't see myself not eating meat not eating cheese I would have thought how can I survive if I don't eat those things right so here I've got my notes here so hopefully I don't lose my place but now what happens is um whenever I share my story and this came up just the other day this is kind of what's prompting this this um this podcast is uh, if I'm out and about and I see somebody who I haven't seen in a little while, of course I look different, right? I look different. Um, and, and if I share about my story, because most people that ask me are going to, you know, I share about healing my body, the prediabetes, the obesity, the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, they're going to ask me how, like, how are you doing that, right? Um, because I would ask somebody else if I saw them and they were like a totally transformed person because I I am and if you if you if you have question on that hop on the forkfix.com look at the blog I have a picture there before and after I found another really good one of when I was probably at my biggest the other day and I look and I'm it's just so different and I just feel so different but anyways um I explain about, you know, going now I'm eating a whole food plant-based diet and trying to move my body more and it's just completely you know it's completely um, changed my life, right? And they will, I, I'm almost always like then given the, the next thing that happens out of, out of most people's mouth. And it's not about, you know, me saying what they're doing is wrong, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But they, over, overwhelmingly, I get the, I could, I could never. That's what this podcast title is about. And that's because I hear that so often. I could never give up meat. That's usually the first thing. I could never give up cheese. I could never give up eggs. You know, they just can't see themselves doing that. And this is the thing. This is the thing. I could sit here and tell you, you need to eat whole food plant-based. And I will tell you that. But I also understand being on the other side of it and having that, that thought of, I can't see myself doing that. I can't even fathom the idea of doing that, right? Just like most people couldn't fathom having eight kids. Here I sit with eight and I'll tell you it was the best decision that we ever made, right? So, um, so anyways, I can understand it. I understand where they're coming from. I understand that perspective because that used to be me. It used to be me. So what happened? Uh, you might be asking, what happened so that, that, you know, those things are different. I just changed my freaking mind. I just tried. I decided to try it. Now, I don't want to talk about the kids. Just try it. See if you like, no, no. But when it comes to food, right? Um, you know, it's just an idea that we, we, we see ourselves in a certain way. We see ourselves doing, doing, um, certain things like having the eight kids. I realize most people aren't going to do that. I realize that homeschooling again, most people aren't going to do that except for because of COVID, you know, more and more people have come to homeschooling and, um, that's great. And, um, Starting a business, again, most people aren't going to do that. There are a lot of people that start businesses. And I'm here to tell you that I probably learned, you know, I learned a lot about myself um, having a business. And um, and so if there's anything out there that you want to pursue in terms of business, I know this doesn't have anything to do with food, you should try it. It's such a, it's such a life lesson. But again, um, having eight kids has certainly taught me a lot about myself. It's taught me a lot about the things that need to change, to be honest with you. So anyways, um, the other thing, though, that I mentioned, the first thing that I mentioned uh, about the I could never syndrome was smoking, guys. The three packs a day, right? And let's just talk about smoking for a minute. Um, yeah, so smoking. Like, how do you out for all of the people out there either watching on the YouTubes or Facebook or actually you can even watch the video on Spotify. If you have Spotify, this is actually you can watch it as a video, not just a podcast. But anyways, if you're watching or listening, how many people have you out there? How do you feel about smoking? I would just probably wager to bet most of you are non-smokers. And and 
it's kind of interesting to think about it. Not in my, in my day, we had the warning label on the package, right? So I knew it was bad for me, but maybe not to the extent that I did, but, um, but I knew it was bad for me. I didn't talk about, actually, I didn't talk about why I quit smoking, but I'll talk about that here in a minute. But you know, they're used back in the very beginning of smoking. I think doctors even endorsed it. It was, you know, marketed to, it was the cool, classy thing to do, right? To have a cigarette. So no one knew that it was bad for them. And, and then we got the label on the packaging. You know, if you're a pregnant woman, I don't even remember what all it said. I don't know if it said it caused cancer, but I should have known that, right? Um, but anyways, okay, I'll tell you too, that that I quit smoking because of Darren, my husband. Um, he was absolutely against smoking and I knew that we wouldn't be together if, if I didn't quit. So that's why I quit. But going back to it, I would just bet that most of you will not pick up a cigarette right now. You're just not going to do that because you know, you know that it's going to cause your body harm. And that seems silly to do that. Right? So let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the, I could never that I hear from other people that I could never give up you know, meat, or I can never give up cheese, or I can never give up, you know, ye, like the eggs. But once we know better, we do better. Um, and this is the thing. I realize that it's not out there in all the places. You're not seeing commercials for whole food plant-based eating. But I'm here to tell you that, um, that this book that I mentioned, I did the podcast last week was on disease reversal hope. So those of you that are listening, I'm holding up the book. You can get it on Amazon. I just, I'm, you just need to get it because it's a wonderful book. But it's story after story of people that have been, you know, their lives have been completely transformed. Their diseases have been reversed. And, you know, I've experienced that myself. I no longer am diabetic. I don't have high cholesterol anymore. I'm no longer obese. If I put my little uh, weight in the, in the BMI calculator, I hit the normal mark, people, in less than a year. So I'm down, I think as of today, like 92 pounds. That's amazing. That's just insane. So anyways, it's not just me saying this. There is story after story, people after, you know, just, the thing is, there's just not a lot of money in, in healing yourself with food, you know? It's not the pharmaceuticals or the, the big... Lots of hospitals are making their money on people's arteries being clogged. I think the biggest money maker in a hospital is doing bypass surgery. And it doesn't even fix the problem. It's just helping people suffer a little longer, really. So, but anyways, um, so if we know better, right, we do better. So, yeah. So, if you give, this is the thing. If you try whole food plant-based eating, I could almost guarantee that you, um, you were going to feel better, but you got to give it a little time, you know, a little time. I would say three weeks to so give it three weeks. So if you're someone out there suffering from, it doesn't have to be heart disease, but if you're, you know, insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, if you have any autoimmunes, um, you got, I think I just shared a thing on, um, a video on Facebook. It was from the disease reversal, Re reversal hope where there was a gentleman who had rheumatoid arthritis to the point where he was just in so much, I mean, just it, he, he maxed out the chemo drugs and it doesn't have to be that extreme, but he healed himself with whole foods. Once you get your body to a, you know, when you're feeding it the right things, giving it the right fuel, um, it, you're just going to see amazing things happen. So I think the thing is like the title of this is I could never, but if you just give it a chance, you're going to end up being like me and you're going to, you're going to say, I'm so glad that I did that. I could nevers are going to go away. And I think that it's hard sometimes to change our thinking. And I, and a lot of times that's what it comes down to. There are emotions tied to food. I haven't dug into all of that, but I know how that is. You know, I was the one, I loved food. I loved food when I was happy, loved food when I was sad. I, you know, it was my best friend for a very long time, a very long time, but it still is in a different way. Um, although I, I don't look to food to, to, um, to fill that hole. And, and any of you out there who have any issues with emotional eating, you know what I'm talking about. But the other thing is too, I will tell you that food that you're eating, if it's refined and fat and oily and salty, 
it's going to tell your body to have more of it. So you're just, it's not your fault. You're fighting a demon that we're not meant to eat like that. We're just not meant for that. Our bodies aren't meant for that. And the other thing I will say about the I could never syndrome is it's kind of like I can't syndrome, really, when it, when you, when it comes down to it. And having homeschooled for 18 years now, I've learned a lot of things about teaching kids, but, um, and they've taught me a ton too, for sure. But in my house, whenever the kids would say I can't, I, I said they weren't allowed to. That was, that was a cuss word. That was a curse word. You know, saying I can't was kind of like saying fuck in my house. I didn't, you know, obviously I, I'm in my house and I just said that, but, but I, it, it's not appropriate, right? Not, and I, and the, and the reason that I would say to the kids, you know, that's a dirty word is because generally it wasn't them saying that I can't, it was them saying, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, because I don't want to do the work. It's too hard. Um, and I think I saw a meme just the other day, Let me get a little drink here before I finish up, <clears throat> got a little tickle, sorry. Um, uh, and it said, get, you know, getting healthy is hard but getting sick is hard. So choose your heart or being sick is hard. So choose your heart. And, and there's some, tr there's truth to that. Uh, but I will tell you that it was harder for me before going whole food plant-based and living the way that I lived than now. And I, uh, I, I just really, I can't even hardly express it. How, um, if you do the work and you put in and you really commit to um, caring for your body, it's really not, it's really not that hard. It's a domino effect. It starts with the fork and what you're eating. You'll feel better. Then you'll have energy. You'll want to move. And then all of a sudden you find you're freaking exercising when you thought that you could never do it. So I will, I will leave you with this. A really wise woman just said to me the other day that um, most good things take time, work, and patience. And that's so true. So give it some time, you know, try this out. Try a, If you're not already eating whole food plant-based or if you are eating whole food plant-based, but you're not giving it a hundred percent, then you're not going to get a hundred percent of the results, right? So give it some time, you know, be patient in the process. Give yourself grace. It's not a diet that you're going to fall off of. It's a lifestyle. So with every meal, with every day, with every choice you make, making wise choices for your body, you're, it's going to pay off in the end. So, you know, the time, the patience, and put in the work. Do the work. Go buy, fill your fridge full of fruits and fresh fruits and vegetables. Because first off, this is the thing. If you don't want to give up the meat and cheese or whatever, you need to. But let's say you don't. First off, I'll tell you, give up the damn cheese and the dairy because it's the worst thing for you. It's, you know, if you... If you look up as cheese like... Look up as cheese like heroin. Look it up on Google, right? Look it up. The dopamine hit that your body gets from from cheese, it's the reason people say they can't give it up is because they're fucking addicted to it, just like the cigarettes. But anyways, I digress. I digress and I cuss a little. <laughs> um, give it give it a chance, but put in the work. Get yourself some fresh fruits and vegetable, vegetables because first off, I can almost guarantee if you're not eating this way, you are fiber deficient because like 97% of the United States population doesn't get enough fiber. And we wonder why we have issues with uh, colon cancer being such a big deal or leaky gut syndrome, which leads to autoimmune disease. So if you have an autoimmune and you're eating dairy, cheese, meat, doesn't matter if it's fish or lean chicken, it, the proteins are still going to give you leaky gut and they're still going to lead to that autoimmune. So look into whole food plant-based eating. If you don't want to listen to me, go to... Um, you know, nutritionstudies.org, go to nutritionfacts.org. Um, just start looking it up. Dig in for yourself. I think you're going to be surprised. Go out and get the book, Disease Reversal Hope. Read some of the stories. If you, Even if you are healthy and you have no issues, but you have someone in your family that's dealing with chronic disease, please, please dig into this. Whole food plant-based eating can be life-changing. And like I said before, don't, don't have the I could nevers have the, I'm glad I did. So I'll leave you with this. Don't be screwed by food. Eat whole food plant-based. I will be back next week with something else new, hopefully. And you can check out my latest blog post on theforkfix.com. Head on over and say hi on Instagram or Facebook. I'd love to have you join me there. So again, thanks so much for watching guys. And if you want to, uh, 
subscribe wherever you see this. That would be fabulous. And leave me a review or a comment. I'd love to know how you're doing. So thanks again. Have a blessed one. See you next week.